Shahrukh Monjazeb, who is our speaker today, is a scholar of Baha'i history and sacred scriptures who has been involved in translating the writings from Arabic and Persian for quite a long time. He has also published uh, various articles, including an article on Baha'u'llah, a brief survey of his life and works. He's spoken at the Association for Baha'i Studies. I don't think we can count how many times, Shahrukh, uh, since I've seen you at just about every ABS, I think, uh, and we're, of course, delighted that his work has proved, proved so useful for everybody, and it's been so in-depth and insightful in understanding the writings of Baha'u'llah in Arabic and Persian. Uh, we'll be looking particularly, of course, here at the Bayan, and I guess we will now turn it over to Sharokh, who has a very lengthy presentation today, 69 slides, and we will be delighted to hear them. So good to be here with you again. Uh, some of the some of you have uh, uh, have taken some of my webinars in the past. Um, I feel very honored and privileged, especially today, to be with you uh, in a year that will witness the celebration of the bicentennial of the birth of the Herald of the Baha'i Faith, His Holiness the Bab. And uh, I decided to make a commitment to to do this. Uh, survey, if you will, a concise study of the Persian Bayan. Uh, for, for those of you who may not be familiar with the, the sheer size of this, uh, uh, this, this work, this is the Bob's magnum opus, his most holy book, uh, which the French translation of uh, Nicolas, the, uh, the Orientalist, the Persian-born Orientalist, is in excess of 600 pages. So this is by far the lengthiest and the most voluminous of all the works uh, of the Bab, as well as that of Baha'u'llah. I think the closest uh, work of, single work of Baha'u'llah that comes close to this is Kitab Badi, that may be almost the same size, but I haven't done a compar comparison of the two as far as the, uh, uh, the, the size of them. So, uh, so here, what we are hoping in this two-month two course is to give you an over, overall overview of what the Bayan uh, and the contents of it is. So in some ways, I'm going to be your tour guide taking you through uh, this journey. Um, there, are, there is a wonderful book uh, that has been written that covers the Bayan extensively by Dr. Nadir Saidi. Many of you know it. Uh, it's called The Gate of the Heart. And he's done a brilliant analysis uh, and, and a full survey uh, of the major contents of the Persian Bayan and, of course, all the other works of the Bob. So that's a very valuable resource. Um, however, it does not go into a chronological survey of, uh, of every chapter. And what I'm hoping to do here with you is to take you through uh, the 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 entire book and show you the structure of it and and give you some of the highlights of some of the major contents of the of this great magnificent work of the bob so getting right into it uh looking at the rank and position of the persian bayan in the sacred writings of the bobby religion uh in his survey of the first century of the bobby and baha'i religions shoghi effendi the appointed guardian of the baha'i faith in his book entitled God Passes By, refers to the Bayan as that monumental repository of the laws and precepts of the new dispensation and the treasury enshrining most of the Bob's references and tributes to, as well as his warning regarding him whom God will make manifest. And the Guardian goes on to say, peerless among the doctrinal works of the founder of the Babi dispensation, fulfilling the Mohammedan prophecy that a youth from Bani Hashem will reveal a new book and promulgate a new law. The Guardian continues in the same book by stating that the Bayona Farsi is wholly safeguarded from the interpolation and corruption, which has been the fate of so many of the Bob's lesser works. Um, I will get into that a little bit later, this reference to the, to, to the uh, interpolation, as well as the dest destruction. There was a, a campaign by the 
uh, Shia clergies of Iran uh, during the time of the Bab, and later to completely obliterate and erase all the works and any memory, any history, uh, and, and the massacres that ensued uh, following the attempt on the life of the Shah, the, the Babi pogrom of uh, 1852, also led to this uh, concerted effort by the government as well as the institution of the Shia clergy to completely erase from history uh, the Bab's religion. And this led uh, to many ways of destroying and destruction of the writings of the Bab, and Bayan was no exception, and I will get into that a little bit later here. But the interpolation that Shoghi Effendi is here is referring to is not only by the uh, later, perhaps, um, enemies of the of the Bob, but they were also, in order to discredit the Bob, many of his writings were uh, uh, were were altered by uh, by some of the uh, inimical people towards him, particularly the clergy. And I'll come back to that a little later as well. So um, the Guardian says that the Bayan of Farsi is wholly safeguarded from the interpolation and corruption, which has been the fate of so many of the Bob's lesser works. And uh, Baha'u'llah does refer to this later on, and I'm gonna um, bring, bring out Baha'u'llah's reference when we talk about the manuscripts and various editions of the, uh, um, of the Bayan. Uh, the Guardian further adds that the Persian Bayan is a book of about 8,000 verses occupying a pivotal position in Babi literature. To just put it into perspective, the Holy Quran is roughly about 6,300 verses or ayeh. And the Guardian here has, uh, has, 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 is, is making a, a reference that the Bayan is about 8,000 verses. Now, I'll, we'll get into how many lines and roughly how, the length of it a little bit later when we look at the external features of the, of the Bayan. So, but by just, just this sheer comparison, it, it's, it's at least uh, one and a half times the, the Holy Quran, you know? So you gotta, you know, understand that it's not a, it's not a small book. Um, so therefore, it, it makes it somewhat formidable, uh, especially for us in, in a course that we are, uh, we have time restrictions to go through every bit of it. I wish we had uh, the time to do that and perhaps uh, other courses in future could do that, but uh, hopefully this would be a pioneering uh, online course to, to set the stage for future studies. The Guardian maintains that the Bayan should be regarded primarily as a eulogy of the promised one rather than a code of laws and ordinances designed to be a permanent guide to future generations. I want to also pause here and talk about the fact that the laws that was introduced by the Bob, uh, he had himself had said that him whom God shall make manifest, i.e. Baha'u'llah, would either sanction it or alter it and, and would be implemented. So there are many laws that later on in the Kitab Aqdas were, uh, were validated, were reinstated uh, and reactivated, if you will. Um, and there were some laws that were abrogated uh, for example, the law of burning of books, and we'll come back to that. Um, but there are, there, there, are, there are also laws that Baha'u'llah had been, has been silenced on. And for me, as far as my understanding, and this is something that the House of Justice can later on clarify, is that those laws will continue to be part of the canon, part of the corpus, of, of, of Baha'i laws going forward, because you, you have to recognize that the revelation, the Baha'i revelation began on May 23rd, 1844, and not on April uh, 22nd, 1863. So the, the Bob is part and parcel of this revelation. 
and this revelation that will last a thousand years uh, according to Baha'u'llah. So, so we have to look at that, that many of the teachings of the Bab are already in use and already have been activated, so to speak, uh, since their revelation. So again, we'll come back to some of those laws and those laws that we take for granted, for instance, um, um, that that were originally enunciated by the Bob. So we're going to also take a look at some of that and 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 uh, examine that briefly. Uh, so here, the Guardian's statement that it should not be a uh, it was not designed uh, to be a permanent guide to future generations, meaning as a, as a whole, uh, but parts of it remains uh, very much uh, active uh, in this revelation. Now, summarizing the major themes of the Persian Bayan, Shoghi Effendi writes, this book at once abrogated the laws and ceremonials enjoined by the Quran regarding prayer, fasting, marriage, divorce, and inheritance, and upheld in its integrity the belief in the prophetic mission of Muhammad, even as the prophet of Islam before him had annulled the ordinances of the gospel and yet recognized the divine origin of the faith of Jesus Christ. The Guardian further adds that the Bayan of Farsi interpreted in a mastery fashion the meaning of certain terms frequently occurring in the sacred books of previous dispensations such as such as paradise hell death resurrection the return the balance the hour the last judgment and the like which essentially what we would term uh, uh, as eschatology and the Bob does go very much in depth into that, and we'll see some of some examples of that with some of the translations of the excerpts of the Persian Bayan as well. And finally, the Guardian avers designedly severe, referring to the Bayan, in the rules and regulations it imposed, revolutionizing in the principles it instilled calculated to awaken from their age-long torpor the clergy and the people and to administer a sudden and fatal blow to obsolete and corrupt institutions. The Bayan also, the Guardian says, proclaimed through its drastic provisions the advent of the anticipated day, the day when the summoner shall summon to a stern business, quote unquote, when he will admonish whatever hath been before him, even as the apostle of God demolished the ways of those that preceded. So uh, the word was demolish. I will read that again. When he will, this new summoner, demolish whatever hath been before him, even as the apostle of God, Muhammad, uh, demolished the ways of those that preceded him, like the idolaters. Now, looking at the Persian Bayan as the most holy book of uh, Babi religion, there have been some questions about the fact that uh, uh, Baha'u'llah's reference in the, uh, the Kitab i Iran to uh, the Bab's first major work, Ayyum al Asma, as being the first and the greatest. Um, that is just a reference, in my opinion, that, uh, that it's, it's is there to accentuate the station of that book, uh, you know, and uh, many Persian scholars also believe that that's what it really is meant to say um, in its idiomatic reference. Um, however, it is very clear from multiple references that the Bayan is the mother book uh, of the Babi religion and the most holy book of it, and we will see that here. So in general, the phrase, the mother book or the most holy book is given to the book of laws of each religion. Uh, the Bab has singled out the Persian Bayan as the book uh, of his revelation. He actually refers to it as a singular book, and Baha'u'llah has confirmed this by referring to the Bayan as 
the Bob's book as his book. In fact, uh, many of you are very familiar with this passage in the Arabic tablet of Ahmad where Baha'u'llah uh, writes, say, O people, be obedient to the ordinances of God which have been enjoined in the Bayan by the glorious, the wise one. Verily, he is the king of the messengers and his book, the Bayan, is the mother book, did he but no. So this reference to the Ummul Kitab or the mother book um, is definitely is unequivocal. And, and also, you know, putting it in a historical context, the Tablet of Ahmad here was revealed around 1864, um, 1865 at the latest. Um, so this is after Baha'u'llah's declaration in the Garden of Rizwan. Um, yet Baha'u'llah refers to the Bayan uh, as the mother book. And this was uh, prior to obviously the revelation of the Kitab Abdas, Baha'u'llah's own most holy book, which took place in 1873. So um, the Bayan in the, in the sight of Baha'u'llah also occupies a very significant position. And we will see that, and there are many references that Baha'u'llah makes, uh, in fact, countless references uh, to the Bayan uh, in, in, in his own writings. Um, also in the epistle to the son of the wolf, many of you will recognize this passage from Baha'u'llah where he says, this much, however, is known and is clear and indubitable that he, the Bab, hath ordained the book of the Bayan to be the foundation of his works. It's page 165 of the American edition of the Epistle to the Son of the Wolf. Now, in one of his writings, the Bab himself describes the Bayan in these words. He writes, the Bayan is in truth our conclusive proof for all created things and all the peoples of the world are powerless before the revelation of its verses. It enshrineth the sum total of all the scriptures, whether of the past or of the future. So I think it makes it very clear uh, where, Baha, where the Bab himself uh, stands with regards to the Bayan. And, and there are also numerous references by the Bab about the preeminence of the Bayan among his works. For instance, in the Persian Bayan itself, uh, in, in book two, chapter six, or Vahid, uh, the second Vahid and of, the, uh, of the book in the, the, the gate six, he writes, the Bab writes, the Bayan shall constitute God's unerring balance till the day of resurrection, which is the day of him whom God shall make manifest. So here the Bab stating that this is going to be the most important, the most significant work pending uh, the declaration and the revelation of Baha'u'llah. And, and after that, uh, all his writings, as he has always said, is subordinate to that of him whom God shall make manifest. Baha'u'llah also uses the phrase unerring balance in the Kitab Agdas as a reference um, to his own most holy book. So again, this is also common and, and establishes the fact that uh, the Bayan is uh, the, 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 the preeminent work uh, of the revelation of the Bab. Now, looking at the dating of the Persian Bayan and the Arabic Bayan, there are several direct and indirect references by the Bab in the text of the Persian Bayan that at the time of the composition of the Persian Bayan, he was confined in the citadel of Moku. Um, for example, in the seventh chapter of the second book, Wahid to Bab 7, um, and this has been translated by the Baha'i World Center in selections from the writings of the Bab, uh, ex excerpt 35, paragraph 12. And uh, it's, this is where, where he says, un, they have unjustly consigned him to the mountain of Maku. So there's a reference that as he's writing it, he is in the um, citadel of Maku. 
Also in, um, in book four, chapter 16, um, this has not been translated. Um, in, in the original, he writes, Hal muhakkak an bayt dar jabal makust wa qayr az yek nafs dar nazd unist. Essentially, a rough translation would be that, that he is now dwelling in the, in the mountain of Maku, and there is no one in his presence except one soul. And this is a reference to uh, Sayyid Hussaini Yazdi, who was uh, a companion of Baha'u'llah during his confinement in Maku and Chehrir. Um, and he was also one of the letters of the living and the Bob's amanuensis as well. Again, uh, there is another reference um, that uh, brings the, 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 the historical context of the, the revelation. The Bob in chapter eight um, of book six, uh, he states uh, that um, there has been three years have elapsed since the advent of his revelation. So if we add the year 1260, plus three, you get the year 1263. Now the year 1263, and again, this is for, for those who speak Persian. Hal qarib be se sal mutajawiz ast ve amrullah zahir shode ta anke emruz mahal maqsood khud ra dar jabal qarar dade eid. All right, so the Bab, the Bab arrived in Maku in July 1847. We know that. It was mid Rajab to mid Sha'ban 1263. Uh, and the year 1263 ended on December 8, 1847. So the revelation of the Persian Bayan may have begun soon after the Bab's arrival in Maku and lasted to the end of his confinement there or even beyond his stay there. Uh, the Bob left Maku in early April 1848. He arrived in the uh, in the prison of Chehrir around April 10th, uh, 1848, based on historical accounts and, and, and evidences that we have. Now, both Dr. Nader Saidi and Dr. Uh, Nusratullah Muhammad Husseini suggest or have suggested in their works that um, there, the, the Bayan may have also been revealed, the, the latter portions of it um, may have been revealed in Chehrik, and, and there's a good reason for that. So uh, to quote that from the Gate of the Heart, uh, this is what Dr. Saidi says, there are reasons to believe that the last sections of the book, Persian Bayan, were revealed in Chehrik. So from the evidences provided in the text of the book, the composition of the Persian Bayan, likely began in the second half of 1847 and was completed in the first half of 1848. Now the Arabic Bayan, for those of you who are interested and you have heard obviously that there is another book called the Bayan, um, a shorter version in Arabic is often referred to that, um, was also composed during the same period. I believe it was, it was composed concurrent and it is a condensed version of the Bayona Farsi, making it less weighty, according to Shoghi Effendi, in comparison to the Persian Bayan. Um, the, the reason why the Bab revealed that, again, it's not very clear, uh, perhaps as a more of a summary and to re-emphasize the importance of the subject matter uh, uh, of the Bayan in general, and the pivotal subject matter is him whom God shall make manifest. So the Bob at this point uh, was really um, promoting and uh, pushing the the notion of uh, the the impending or the the imminent um, advent of him whom God shall make manifest. And, and that his revelation is going to come to a close and, and the, 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 the new revelation uh, will resume, if you will. Now, there is no 
about the Persian Bayan in its original language. Now, uh, shifting our, our uh, focus now from, the, from its uh, dating, there is currently no official authorized Baha'i published edition of the Persian Bayan in its original language. Um, one may ask, why would this be the case? This is, uh, this is a very common question that people ask, uh, why is the Persian Bayan not published? And, uh, and, and why did even Shoghi Effendi, uh, during his ministry, try to translate and uh, publish uh, sections of it as well? Now, there is a, there is, there's several very good reasons for it, and one being that Abdul Baha, uh, the center of the covenant of Baha'u'llah, had explicitly stated that the Bayan should be published and translated after the publication and translation of the Kitab Akdas. And for those of you who read Farsi and have a command of the Persian language, uh, you can check this out in volume two of Mr. Eshra Khavari's Ma'ide Asamani, pages 16 and 17. It's a short tablet by Abdul Baha where he essentially says that it, uh, the Bayan should be published after the publication of the Kitab Akdas, which at that time had not taken place. Now, we all know that the first official Baha'i edition of the Kitab Akdas was only published in 1992. Even during Shoghi Effendi's ministry, he only um, compiled um, a synopsis and codification of the Akdas and presented it to the world, um, to the Baha'i world. And also there were excerpts uh, that uh, primarily dealt with different subject matters um, of the Akdas was translated. So it was under the aegis of the Universal House of Justice that in 1992, for the centenary of Baha'u'llah's ascension, that uh, the Baha'i world was gifted with the full translation and annotations of the Kitab Akdas. So this is one of the reasons there has been a, a, a delay of sorts with the, um, with the Bayan. The other reason is, um, it really has not been a priority for the Baha'i World Center to translate and publish the Persian Bayan. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that even the Bab had explicitly stated that the writings of him whom God shall make manifest should take precedence over his own. So uh, with this vast ocean of revelation that both the Bab and Baha'u'llah and later the center of his covenant, Abdul Baha and, and beloved guardian, Shobi Effendi have left uh, the, the the task is 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 so formidable and 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 the projects are so colossal. Uh, one of the reasons at the Baha'i World Center is one of the buildings uh, are dedicated to the study of sacred texts is because of that because we have this tremendous ocean uh, that first has to you know that first you have to uh, authenticate the tablets catalog them. And, and then uh, get into the task of uh, translating them and publishing them. And you know, with limited resources at the Baha'i World Center uh, for the last uh, you know, 50 years, it's, uh, it's, it, it's just, again, it has not been a priority. So uh, I think it will come, uh, but uh, I don't believe that it is something that we will see in the next uh, few years at least. Um, and the, 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 the fact that the, the work is such a large work, uh, you know, translating 600 pages is not, is not uh, simple. And, uh, and then, um, you know, authentication of a so-called canonical authoritative uh, uh, text also that has to take place before any kind of translations would, would, would take place. So, um, uh, so here, the sheer size of the Bayan makes it makes its publication and translations rather difficult. Uh, and finally, um, as I mentioned, the absence of a canonical text approved by the author himself makes uh, establishing an authorized Baha'i version rather challenging. Now, I'll come back to when we talk about the manuscripts and of why uh, we we also don't have a so-called uh, authorized version by the Bob. We may have had it, but it may have been lost. Uh, but we also do have other uh, editions or other manuscripts that are of great value and, and then they are authoritative. Um, so um, now the British academic Bo uh, Bobby scholar, Dennis McEwen in his 
book, The Sources for Early Bobby Doctrine and History. You know, Dennis McEwen uh, um, is, a, is a scholar. He wrote his PhD um, on, on the um, ministry of the Bob, on the Bobby movement. Um, he has since withdrawn from the faith, but for many years, he actually, in the 70s, he served at the Baha'i World Center. So he had access uh, to some of the archival uh, materials and that was at the time at the Baha'i World Center. So in his book, which is entitled The Sources for Early Bobby Doctrine and History, published by E.J. Brill, uh, he has identified over 40 extant manuscripts of the Persian Bayan. Uh, he has just listed them. There's not too much of an explanation about each of the manuscripts. What we do know uh, that 12 of these, out of these 40 manuscripts, 12 of these are preserved at the International Baha'i Archives uh, in Haifa, Israel. Now, of these 12 manuscripts, two of them are, are of particular significance. Um, one is in the handwriting of Sayyid Hussein Yazdi. We know that, we have it. Um, he's, a, he's acknowledged it. In fact, Dr. Nusatullah Muhammad Hosseini says that when he was in the Holy Land over 50 years ago, he, had, he was given the privilege of viewing that manuscript. Uh, so so this, it, this manuscript in the handwriting of the Bob's amanuensis, uh, one of the letters of the living who was, who was put to death in the Bobby pogrom of 1852, makes this edition the earliest and the most authoritative of uh, all the editions. There is, as far as we know, there is no uh, edition in the handwriting um, of the Bob himself. There, are, there is, however, a, a large section of the Arabic Bayan that is in the handwriting of the Bob and the original of that is with the Azali community. Um, they published a facsimile, facsimile of it when they published an edition of the Arabic Bayan in the 1940s in Iran. So I don't believe that edition um, does exist at the Baha'i World Center. Now, there may have been an edition in the handwriting or parts of the Bayan uh, in the handwriting of the uh, His Holiness the Bob, but that may have been destroyed. We again, we don't know. Now, you have to understand, and I will get to this in, in a second. There was literally a campaign by the Shia clergies of Iran at the time to destroy all the writings of the Bob. In fact, there was a fatwa by the Son of the Wolf. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad Taqiyya Najafi, uh, that Baha'u'llah refers to it in the epistle to the son of the wolf, that, that the fatwa was to destroy all the writings of, of the Bab, uh, that wherever they would see it, it would be destroyed, burnt. And Baha'u'llah begs the, the son of the wolf to, to cease and desist from this practice, from this fatwa, to reverse his fatwa. Uh, and and there is and there's a reference by Baha'u'llah in there. So um, this is perhaps why um, you know there's only 40 extant manuscripts. Now there are ma various manuscripts that are held in various universities, Western universities. There's some in in, in Tehran, in Iran, uh, that have been in some of the libraries, uh, and I know in some of the universities. Uh, particularly in, in, in Oxford and Cambridge, I believe um, there are editions of the, uh, the Persian Bayan as well there. Now, the second um, manuscript of particular significance is in the handwriting of Zainul Mugharabin. Now, Zainul Mugharabin, for those of you who are not familiar, he was one of Baha'u'llah's apostles, and he is especially known for his uh, accurate transcriptions of Baha'u'llah's writings. In fact, uh, Abdul Baha has acknowledged him that anything that is in the handwriting of Zainul Mugharabin is, is, um, is, is correct and should be considered as authoritative. Um, 
Now, Zain al-Mugharabin became a Baha'i in, uh, I believe, in the Baghdad period. So he, uh, this edition in the, in the handwriting of Zain al-Mugharabin may have been commissioned by Baha'u'llah uh, during his ministry. Uh, to to take maybe a copy, uh, one of the early copies, and and have it and transcribe it. Um, I had requested some clarification from the Baha'i World Center archives uh, regarding the uh, these two editions and whether there was a colophon uh, and dating, uh, particularly in the Zain al Mugharabin edition. Unfortunately, I have not received any um, any response yet. Uh, but because I, I know for a fact Zain al-Mugharamin always used a colophon, uh, a dating um, of his manuscript, and then we would know uh, from which era, <coughs> excuse me, and w from what time period uh, that particular manuscript uh, is. Now, in the Epistle to the Son of the Wolf, um, Baha'u'llah refers to two authoritative copies. Uh, of the Persian Bayan, which were extant and in Baha'i possession back in 1891. Um, Baha'u'llah writes, and this is I'm quoting from the Epistle to the Son of the Wolf, page 173. Um, he, said, he writes that they contend that this Bayan is not the original one. See, there was also controversies and rumors that was spread by uh, many of the enemies of the faith and enemies of the Bab that uh, the writings of the Bob had been destroyed and that um, some of these editions are, are later um, man-made interpolations and, and so on and so forth. And Baha'u'llah obviously uh, rebuttals this by say, stating that the, there is a copy in the handwriting of Sayyid Hussaini Yazdi, which is extant, uh, which is the one that is now at the Baha'i World Center. And also he refers to another copy in the handwriting of Mirza Ahmad Khatib. Mirza Ahmad Khatib is Mullah Abdul Karim Qazvini. He is uh, referred to in the Dawnbreakers uh, as one of the amanuensis uh, that used to transcribe the writings of the Bab. He was also a good friend uh, to Nabil Zarandi and also met his uh, untimely death during the Babi pogrom of uh, 1852. And his, anything in his handwriting is also considered by Baha'u'llah <clears throat> as an authorized edition um, of, of those, or, or authorized transcription of the writings of the Bab. Now, the only fully published edition of the Persian Bayan in its original language is a lithographed edition by the Babi Azalis, which was presumably published in Tehran circa 1946. Now this edition hereafter referred to as the Tehran Azali manuscript or TAM is based on several 19th century manuscripts, the earliest of which was transcribed in, in the summer of 1857 by an early Babi identified as Sayyid Yusuf Esfahani. Now, according to two prominent contemporary Baha'i scholars, the late Dr. Muhammad Afnan and Dr. Nusratullah Muhammad Husseini, the TAM edition is very reliable. In fact, uh, the TAM edition is one of the most popular editions of the Persian Bayan used by most Persian Baha'i scholars. Um, so many of the, the works that were researched uh, by people like Dr. Nusatullah Muhammad Husseini, Dr. Afnan, and perhaps uh, I, I haven't checked with uh, Dr. Saidi Nader, uh, but I think he may have used that edition as well. There's other editions, but this was a very nicely published, and this is the one that we'll be referencing in this course um, because it's the most complete and the most legible and uh, you know reliable uh, edition. So uh, we will be referencing it as a source. Now there is a version of this that in the last few years um, 
the um, the Bobby Azalis, who refer to themselves as Bayonis, have um, um, posted this on their website. Now, every time you have a copying or transcription, that becomes a new edition. So um, I'm not going to make any comment about the the edition that is posted on the Bayani. Uh, website, but there is a very good chance that it is a copy of this 1946 TAM edition. Uh, but again, you know, being that it would have to have been inputted in, you know, and and be typed uh, for posting, it's it's actually not a uh, photo facsimile of it. It's actually a um, a, a typed version um, of the Bayon. So. Um, in, 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 in any event, uh, the edition, you know, in the absence of a Baha'i authorized edition, uh, the best edition that we can refer to here, that at least I will refer to, uh, is the, the Tehran Azali manuscript or TAM. Now, the, to give you a little bit of the external features of the TAM, uh, the entire text of the Persian Bayan is calligraphied in 328 pages. So, um, you know, again, it's a, it's a thick uh, edition, if you will. Each page consists of 19 lines, except the first uh, page, which is 12 lines, and the last page is 14 lines. This roughly adds up to about 6,220 lines of text. Um, so it is extensive. Uh, the text is written in a beautiful and very legible Nasta Alir style, and I have a um, copies of it here for you. I can show you uh, a little bit bigger copies. This is uh, page 43 and 44. As you can see, there are 19 lines here in each page. Uh, let's take a look at the next page. So this is a, the opening of um, book two chapter 10 and book two, chapter 11, uh, page 45 and 46. Um, again, very legible um, and, uh, and hopefully as accurate as we can get it. Some of the other external features of this uh, TAM edition is this edition does not identify, so it does not identify the publisher. It does not identify the publication date um, and does not name the calligrapher who transcribed this. It also includes at the end a two-page preface to the book uh, by an unidentified source, which uh, gives the provenance of um, how this manuscript was put together. In fact, um, they make mention that it was you know, collected uh, from several early manuscripts, and the earliest one that I mentioned to you, which was uh, which was by Sayyid Yusuf Esfahani, um, which was in 1858-57, and then other other uh, 19th century and early 20th century transcriptions as well. The according to the Bob himself, now this is taking us to the next level, uh, the structure and pagination. Um, and this is, this is an area where it's been rather confusing for a lot of people, uh, including the, 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 the Western Baha'is, since the Bob uses terminologies that are rather foreign or rather new uh, to, to many. Um, I've tried to kind of simplify this and bring some kind of clarity to it. According to the Bab himself, the Bayan was intended to have 19 Vahids or books. Um, and each book was intended to have 19 Bobs or chapters uh, for an overall total of 361 chapters, uh, equaling the numerical value of the phrase Kuloshe, uh, which translates to all things. The Bob speaks of that in the first chapter. Uh, however, 
in the final version of the Bayona Farsi, the Bob chose to write only nine books instead of 19. And each of these nine books consists of 19 chapters with the exception of the ninth book, which only has 10 chapters. So overall, the existing um, edition or the, the, the final version by the Bob of the Persian Bayan only consists of 162 chapters instead of 361. And its completion has been, um, um, has been deferred to him whom God shall make manifest and surely offending God passes by states that uh, the kitab e the book Baha'u'llah's Book of Certitude, is believed to have been the completion, has completed the, the Persian Bayan. Now, for ease of use in English and more coherent identification of the proper order and sequences of passages in the Bayan of Farsi, we shall use the following paginations for this course. Um, each Vahid or unity will be identified as a book and each bob or gate will be referred to as a chapter. So for instance, uh, Vahid uh, 3, Bob 14 would be book 3, chapter 14, followed by a symbol, a paragraph symbol for paragraph and the letter L for line. This way we can identify where the actual passage is from exactly. So here, um, for example, in a sentence, that which is worthy of his essence um, is to worship him for his sake without fear of fire or hope of paradise um, appear in the second excerpt from the Persian Bayan in the selections from the writings of the Bob, uh, which was published by the Baha'i World Center, page 78, and would be identified as Persian Bayan, book seven, chapter 19, paragraph two, lines two to four, or in a shorter form, uh, PB dash Roman numero uh, seven, uh, then number 19, paragraph two, lines two to four, in a, you know, in a, in a more of a short form way of going about it. This way, uh, it would be, I think, a lot clearer when we, we identify certain passages. Now, about the authorized Baha'i translation, English translation, in 1976, under the aegis of the Universal House of Justice, a collection of passages from the writings of the Bab was published in a single volume. This collection was given the title Selections from the Writings of the Bab. Now, among these newly translated extracts from the various writings of the Bab, 39 excerpts were gleaned from the Persian Bayat. And that's the one that we have, and uh, it's been used in, in many um, devotional and uh, various uh, books as an authorized Baha'i translations of the writings of the Bob. Now, these 39 excerpts, to just put it into perspective, from the Bayona Farsi roughly amount to about only 6% of the entire text. So the remaining 94% of the text still remains to be translated and approved as a Baha'i authorized translation. Now the following chart that I'm going to show you will show the overall distribution of the translation, uh, translated passages in the context of the books and chapters of the Persian Bayan. Okay, so in chapter one, there is um, one excerpt. A book one, chapter one, one excerpt. Book two, we have nine excerpts from it um, that are from chapter one. Uh, there's about uh, five passages from chapter one of book two, and then chapter six, seven, eight, and 16. So now to tell you the, um, the second book of the Persian Bayan is the lengthiest of all the books. Uh, the first book is the shortest, uh, the first Vahid, if you will, and the second Vahid is the lengthiest one. Um, <clears throat> then we have book three. There's only two excerpts from book three from chapter 12 and chapter 13. Book four, 
There is also two excerpts from chapter 12 and chapter 18. Book five, we have six excerpts uh, in from chapter four, five, eight, 12, 14, and 19. Uh, book six, we have four excerpts, chapters four, 11, 15, and 16. Chapter seven, we have another six excerpts, um, which are from chapter two, nine, 13, 15. There's two excerpts from chapter 15 and chapter 19. Uh, for book eight, we have also six excerpts uh, from chapter one, chapter 14, 16, nine, as well as 19, uh, the chapter 19, there's two excerpts in there uh, from book eight, chapter 19. And finally, the um, chapter nine, which only has 10 chapters altogether, there's only three excerpts, um, which are from chapter three, chapter four, and chapter 10. So this may give you a little bit of a, um, now, although these chosen excerpts in the selections from the writings of the Bob are extracted from all the nine books or vaheds of the Bayana Farsi, nevertheless, they are not presented in a chronological order. And I can't see the reason why it was presented that way, perhaps thematically, but even that, I think it's a bit of a stretch. It just happened to be uh, extracted that way and was published. So it is not. Uh, they are not in, in chronological order. For instance, the passage number one, the actual opening passage, um, is an excerpt from chapter 16 uh, of book two. And then the actual opening paragraph of the Bayan, which has been translated, appears in this, in this second last excerpt, which is passage number 38. So um, rather, uh, unusual, but again, there may have been a reason for it, but I don't know the reason. Now, it is worth noting uh, and, and pointing out that the Persian Bayan in its original language consists of about 6,220 calligraphy or handwritten lines, as I mentioned. The excerpts in the selections from the writings of the Bab, which were also published in the original Persian and were transcribed in the same style, in the Nastaliq style, only consists of about 375 calligraphy lines. So again, if you just do the math, you'll see that's about 6%. Now, other Western translations of the Persian Bayan. Now, the most comprehensive attempt at translating the Bayan of Farsi into Western language was done in the second decade of the 20th, uh, 20th century by the Persian-born French Orientalist A.L.M. Nicola, uh, who passed away in 1939. Now, Nicola's translation was published in Paris in four separate volumes under the title Le Bayan Persan uh, between the years 1911 to 1914. At this time, he was a high-ranking um, uh, uh, French uh, official station at the Cana at the French um, uh, embassy in Tehran or the French council in, in Tehran. Um, now each volume is about 150 pages in length, which includes both the translation of the text and the extensive annotations. Altogether, the complete French translation of the Persian Bayan is 600 pages in length. So I would suggest that if the entire text was going to be translated at some point in an authorized fashion into English, it would be about 600 pages minus the uh, annotations. Now, another important and valuable work on the Bayona Farsi by an Occidental scholar is that of Professor E.G. Brown, um, which uh, is entitled A Summary of the Persian Bayan, edited and published in 1987 by Dr. Mujan Momen in his selections from the writings of E.G. Brown on the Babi and Baha'i religions. It is a valuable resource in that, um, 
It's the only work that actually gives a summary and a fairly accurate summary of the entire chapters. Uh, this is one of the early works of, uh, of uh, E.G. Brown. He completed it um, in the late 1880s. I think it was 1889. Um, and, um, but it was never got really published. I think he included parts of it or all of it in the, um, in the edition of the, uh, Nukta Tulkov, uh, the translation of the Nukta Tulkov. But, um, again, um, this, this edition that, uh, Dr. Momin has done has, uh, um, uh, has been edited and, uh, uh, and it has annotations as well, um, and some of the uh, guides to some of the inaccuracies of it. But by and large, it is valuable, and I think we have that for the course as far as a resource uh, there as well for you. Now, in his book, Gate of the Heart, um, Dr. Saidi, Dr. Nader Saidi, shows that the writings of the Bob can be grouped into three broad uh, stages, each characterized by a particular dominant thematic focus, as he calls it. Now, he further states that the Bayona Farsi belongs to the third and last stage of the Bob's writings, which began in April of 1847 and ended with his execution on July 9th, 1850. So dividing, and he does it very eloquent and the analysis is absolutely brilliant in my mind, uh, so the three stages, uh, and I would suggest if you want to become more familiar to read that um, uh, in his book, uh, but this three stages really shows the progression and how it kind of reached its zenith or apex, if you will, in the third stage with the revelation of the Bayan. Now describing the third stage of the Bob's writing, Dr. Saidi writes, the Bob's imprisonment in Maku marks the most important turning point in his mission and the beginning of the third stage of his writings. It is during the Maku period that he begins to declare his true station openly, announcing that not only is he the promised Qa'im, but also a new manifestation of God. He goes on to say, while in the first two stages of the Bob's writings, the full nature of his revelation was concealed, the third stage, this third stage and last stage, sees the explicit proclamation of a new religious dispensation and the abrogation of the laws of Islam. This is concurrent with the Bob's declaration that he is the Qa'im of the House of Muhammad, and you'll see that even in the first chapter as well. Now, Dr. Saidi also adds that in the third stage, the Bob begins to employ a completely new set of terms and concepts as vehicles of that revelation. Terms like the primal point, the letters of the living, the tree of the will, he whom God shall make manifest, bayan, all things, and the primal unity, they all come into use during this period and constitute the new language of the new religion. Dr. Saidi further underscores a new development in the language of the third stage of the Bob's writing. Uh, he writes, the explicit character of the writings of the third stage of the Bob's revelations or revelation rather, gives these texts an epistemological and hermeneutical priority over the writings of the two earlier stages. The Bob himself establishes this priority, stipulating that the earlier writings should be understood in terms of the later writings in a holistic approach. So with these important aspects of the third stage of the Bob's writings in mind, we shall begin our concise study of the mother book of the Bobby dispensation here. In this course, um, I will focus uh, the, our attention primarily on the authorized Baha'i translations of the Persian Bayan and putting them into context. 
Um, and, um, and, and there might be, uh, well, there will be some uh, provisional translations done by uh, Dr. Saidi that, I, that has been uh, apparently um, uh, proved, if you will. Uh, I don't know whether they've been authorized, but they've been proved by the research department. Uh, and obviously it's been, a, it's been published. Uh, so it, it is an authorized published work, The Gate of the Heart. Uh, and then there are some minor uh, provisional translation by myself, but I've, I've, I've um, tried to avoid translating as much of it as I can <laughs> because I, I want to keep uh, your focus primarily on the authorized text and those texts that are, uh, uh, that, that are in use or in print. Um, so book one, chapter one of the Bayona Farsi opens with these words. I will read you the original. I will attempt to read you the original, and then we will read the translation. Bismillah al Amna al Agdas, Tasbih wa Tabdis, Besaut Ez Majd Sultani ra laiq, Kalam Yazal wa La Yazal be wujud kainuniyat zat khud bude wa hast. و لم یزل و لا یزال به علو ازلیت خود متعالی از ادراک کل شیع بوده و هست خلق نفرموده آیت عرفان خود را در هیچ شیع الا به عجز کل شیع از عرفان او و تجلی نفرموده به شیع الا به نفس او از لم یزل متعالی بوده از اقتران به شیع و خلق فرموده کل شیع را به شعنی که کل به کینونیت فطرت اقرار کنند نزد او در یوم قیامت به این که نیست از برای او ادلی و نه کفوی و نه شبهی و نه قرینی و نه مثالی بل متفرد بوده و هست به ملیک الوهیت خود و متعزز بوده و هست به سلطان ربوبیت خود نشناخته است او را هیچ شی حق شناختن و ممکن نیست که بشناسد او را شی به حق شناختن زیرا که آنچه اطلاق می شود بر او ذکر شیعیت خلق فرموده است او را به ملیک مشیت خود و تجلی فرموده به او به نفس او در علو مقعد او و خلق فرموده آیه معرفت او را در کنه کل شی تا آنکه یقین کنند به اینکه اوست اول و آخر و اوست ظاهر و باطن و اوست خالق و رازق و اوست قادر و عالم و اوست سامع و ناظر و اوست قاهر و قائم و اوست محی و ممیت و اوست مقتدر و ممتنع و اوست متعالی و مرتفع و اوست که دلالت نکرده و نمی کند الا بر علو تسبیح او و سمو تقدیس او و امتناع توحید او و ارتفاع تکبیر او و نبوده از برای او اولی الا به اولیت خود و نیست از برای او آخری الا به آخریت خود This passage by the way is uh, posted um, at the referencebahai.org it is the authorized uh, version that I have provided you here and here is the authorized translation uh, by the Baha'i World Center in the name of God the most exalted the most holy all praise and glory befitteth the sacred and glorious court of the sovereign Lord, who from everlasting hath dwelt and unto everlasting 
will continue to dwell within the mystery of his own divine essence, who from time immemorial hath abided and will forever continue to abide within his transcendent eternity, exalted above the reach and ken of all created beings. The sign of his matchless revelation as created by him and imprinted upon the realities of all beings is none other but their powerless powerlessness to know him. The light he hath shed upon all things is none but the splendor of his own self. He himself hath at all times been immeasurably exalted above any association with his creatures. He hath fashioned the entire creation in such wise that all beings may by virtue of their innate powers bear witness before God on the day of resurrection that he hath no peer or equal and is sanctified from any likeness, uh, similitude or comparison. He hath been and will ever be one and incomparable in the transcendent glory of his divine being and he hath ever been indescribably mighty in the sublimity of his sovereign lordship. No one hath ever been able befittingly to recognize him, nor will any man succeed at any time in comprehending him as is truly meet and seemly. For any reality to which the term being is applicable hath been created by the sovereign will of the Almighty, who hath shed upon it the radiance of his own self shining forth from his most august station. He hath moreover deposited within the realities of all created things the emblem of his recognition that everyone may know of a certainty that he is the beginning and the end, the manifest and the hidden, the maker and the sustainer, the omnipotent and the all-knowing, the one who heareth and perceiveth all things, he who is invincible in his power and standeth supreme in his own identity, he who quickeneth and causeth to die the all-powerful, the inaccessible, the most exalted, the most high. And finally, in the last sentence of the first paragraph, the Bob writes, every revelation of his divine essence betokens the sublimity of his glory, the loftiness of his sanctity, the inaccessible height of his oneness and the exaltation of his majesty and power. His beginning hath had no beginning other than his own firstness and his end knoweth no end sa save his own lastness. Now, book one, with only 10 handwritten pages in its original language of Revelation, which is a, a mixture of Persian and Arabic, is the shortest book of the Bayona Farsi. Now, the, the, the language of the Revelation is Persian. However, the 19th century style of Persian was very much intermixed with, um, with Arabic phrases. And, and also from time to time, the Bab quotes, for example, from the Quran, or he, he um, reveals a passage just briefly in Arabic. But the, the, the infrastructure, the main language is Persian. In fact, the language is very cogent, very simple. Um, at times, um, it's written so simply that it's almost in a vernacular language. Um, and I believe personally that this was written in such a way that people of Iran, particularly people of that time who may have had limited understanding and were not as familiar with Arabic, for instance, uh, could also comprehend them. You know, so it was there to appeal to a very wide audience. Uh, I believe the way the Bayan um, has has been has been uh, 
revealed and written. Now, <clears throat> chapter one consists of about 101 lines of text in the original Persian Arabic with only the first 13 lines having been translated into English by the Baha'i World Center, which I just read to you. Other select sections of the first chapter have been provisionally translated into English in Dr. Saidi's Gate of the Heart. You can see that on page 265, 266, 270, 271, 281, 283, and 284. For, in for instance, Dr. Saidi writes that the Bob considered the Persian Bayan to be his mother book is evident in his statement in the first gate or chapter of the book, describing the revelation of the Persian Bayan as the inception of the recreation of all things. Um, so this is from the, um, the Persian Bayan, translated by Dr. Saidi. For the very beginning of creation of all things is occurring at this time, a Friday, through the utterance of God. The Lord of majesty hath fashioned this new and wondrous creation by virtue of his own command, and he hath made it to abide beneath his shadow until such time as he will deign to return it. For it is beyond any doubt that it is God who hath brought this creation into being, and it is he who afterwards will cause it to return. Chapter one, book one also emphasizes the common reality of all the manifestations of the primal will with the Bab as the return of Prophet Muhammad in the station of the point of the Quran, as well as the return of all other manifestations of God. In this chapter, the Bab also writes that the recognition of the unity of God is dependent on the recognition of the point of the Bayan. He writes, whoso believeth with certainty that he, the Bab, is the point of the Quran manifested in his latter resurrection and the point of the Bayan in his first revelation, and that he is the primal will who existeth, who existeth in himself, the self-subsisting will, while all things are created through his behest and exist through him, is numbered among those whose inmost reality testifieth unto the unity of his Lord. The Bab further adds, amongst the followers of the Qur'an, <clears throat> today is he who beareth witness unto this word, the declarative statement of the unity of God, whose reality is the manifestation himself, which is the essence of all faith. Without doubt, he uttereth this word solely by virtue of its previous affirmation by Muhammad, the apostle of God, the blessings of God rest upon him. For the true son of this supreme word hath been shining in his heart, and it is a mere shadow thereof that is manifest in those who utter that word today. Therefore, all expressions of this word must now revert to the next revelation of Muhammad, which is the manifestation of the point of the Bayan rather than his first revelation. The remaining 18 chapters of book one address the return of Shia Islamic uh, sacred figures through the Bab's 18 letters of the living. These 18 sacred figures are the prophet Muhammad and his saintly daughter Fatima, plus the 12 Imams and the four deputies of the hidden Imam. Dr. Saidi explains that the principle of the return of the letters of the living derives from the principle of the return of the point of the Quran in the form of the point of the Bayan. In the opening line of chapter two, which consists of 31 handwritten lines in the original language, the Bab writes, the substance of this gate or chapter 
is that Muhammad, the blessings of God rest upon him and the manifestations of his self have all returned to this world and were the first amongst the servants who stood in the presence of God in, the, in this day of resurrection, acknowledged his unity and proclaimed the verses of his Bob unto all humankind. Further on in chapter two, the Bab in a rather mystical way explains the spiritual reality and significance of the letters of the living. He, he writes, as for the most excellent names, God had singled out in this dispensation their names as the 18 letters of the living, for they consist of 14 sacred souls and the hidden well-guarded name whose four letters are referred to by various names, including the four gates. The light, the lights of the throne, the bearers of creation, provision, death, and life, all of these form the name of the living one, for these are the names that are nearest to God. The others are guided by their clear and significant actions, for God began the creation of the Bayan through them, and it is to them that the creation of the Bayan will again return. In his book, Dr. Saidi offers a lengthy and very insightful analysis of this previous passage, which I highly recommend. In fact, I want you for the students of the course to definitely go back uh, and read this. It's several pages, but very illuminating. Um, in Gate of the Heart, pages 269 to 273. Definitely go back to it and read that. And that passage is also included in there. Now in this chapter, the second chapter of book two, the Bob also infers that Prophet Muhammad in the station of servitude of the point of the Quran has returned through the first letter of the living Mullah Hussein Abu Shru'i, whose full name was in fact Muhammad Hussein. You know, we know Mullah Hussein as Mullah Hussein, but his, his birth name was actually Mullah Muhammad Hussein. So, so the Bab says that Mullah Hussein, essentially Prophet Muhammad resurrected appeared before him and was the first person to 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 pay homage and to accept his return his revelation and acknowledge the the return of uh, the the promised one in chapter 3 to 14 uh, they consist of only one handwritten line per each chapter very interesting very uh, fascinating the entire text of chapter three is as follows. I have done a provisional translation here. Uh, and well, actually, Dr. Saidi has also done it. Some of the other ones, I have done that because they were rather short and brief and uh, very clear. Um, so the chapter three begins and ends on this, that Ali, the first Imam, peace be upon him, hath returned to the world together with all of his faithful believers and all who believed in the one other than him. He, and this is a now reference to Mullah Ali Abbastami, the second person who believed uh, in the Bab and the second letter of the living, is after the letter Sin, which is a reference to Mullah Hussein, the second to believe in the point. So this is what the Bab states regarding the, uh, the, the, the first two letters of the living. In chapter four, um, it says uh, on that Fatima, the blessings of God rest upon her, hath returned to the living world together with all of her faithful believers and all who believed in the one other than her. Uh, Fatima's return is, is more than likely is, is, is in the person of Fatima Zarin Taj Barabani, better known to the world as Tahir Quratul Ain. And the fact that there's only one woman 
and that is the Fatima and the name Fatima being the name of the birth name of uh, Tahere. Uh, there is no doubt that this is the uh, the resurrection of the pure and holy daughter of Prophet Muhammad in the person of Fatima here. So we know the first three definitely Mullah Hussein being Muhammad Ali, the, the Imam in Mullah Ali Abbasdami, and Fatima being in the person of Tahira. The rest of the letters of the living, you can, you know, basically guess. Um, you know, you can do some research and figure out who is what, but that has not been um, fully um, disclosed. Chapter five, um, again, on that Hassan, the second Imam, peace be upon him, hath returned to the living world together with all of his faithful believers and all who believed in the one other than him. Um, I suspect Imam Hassan's return is in the person of Mullah Muhammad Hassan Ibu Shri'i, brother of Mullah Hussein, who also met his, um, his uh Death, he was martyred at the fourth of Sheikh Tabarsi, like Mullah Hussein. And uh, Mullah Muhammad Hassan was also um, very much there with Mullah Hussein throughout um, the journeys, and, and, and he, was, he was the traveling companion of his brother um, and, uh, and sacrificed his life uh, in the same path as his noble brother as well. Uh, chapter six on that Hussein. The third Imam, peace upon him, hath returned to the living world together with all of his faithful believers and all who believed in the one other than him. Now here, Imam Hussein's return, obviously uh, the return of Hussein is, is a reference to, to Baha'u'llah's return. However, in this case, there could be a duality in there. This could be Imam Hussein's return, could be in the person of Sayyid Hussein Yazdi, the Bab's faithful amanuensis, and uh, one of the, the prominent and um, brilliant letters of the living. Um, again, I suspect that would be him, but uh, uh, again, that has not been uh, substantiated anywhere else. And again, this continues uh, throughout with all the Imams, chapter seven, uh, Ali ibn Hussein, Zain al Abidin. Uh, peace be upon him, return to the living world together with all of his faithful believers and all who believed in the one other than him. Uh, chapter eight, uh, on that Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baghir, the fifth Imam, peace be upon him, hath returned. So we go all the way, um, chapter nine, chapter 10, um, chapter 11, chapter um, 12, Chapter 13, um, chapter 14, chapter 15. Now, chapter 15, because chapter 14 is um, is is the on that Hassan Hassan ibn Ali uh, al Kazim, the 11th Imam, uh, peace be upon him. Um, hath returned to the living world together with all of his faithful believers. So this is the 11th Imam. And then the, the 12th Imam obviously would have been the Bab. So here in chapter 15, uh, uh, it, it, it's a little bit longer than the rest and it consists of nine handwritten lines in the original language, deals with the return of the 12th Im Shia Imam or the promised Qa'im in the person of the Bab. So here the Bab refers to himself. Um, and then, uh, and then the remaining chapter sixteen through nineteen uh, is the the four deputies of the uh, of the hidden imam. Very interesting um, for some of you who have followed some of my courses in in uh, the course on Jawahar al Asrar, the gems of divine mystery. I extensively talked about that at the time of the death of Hassan al-Askari, the 11th Imam, uh, there were two camps essentially. His, his brother, uh, Jafar, came out and said, you know, Hassan al-Askari did not have a son. And then there was a, one of the deputies of the Hassan al-Askari, which was this fellow and became the first deputy of the hidden, hidden Imam, Usman ibn Said al-Asadi, 
uh, he and other family members of Hassan al Askari stated that there was a child uh, by the name of Muhammad that went into hiding. And that began the controversy for about 100 years, actually, um, for the period of these four deputies that you will see here that there's a reference uh, that you know, it kind of created a division and a tremendous controversy. And eventually, the, um, the, 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 the camp that believed in this, um, this, this the, the hidden imam, having been a son of Hassan al Askari, won over the other camp. And Jafar, the brother of uh, Hassan al Askari, was uh, stigmatized as al kazab the the liar and uh, and 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 this is why the uh, the sixth imam uh, to distinguish him from this jafar his name was jafar they are referred to him as sadiq uh, the truthful so jafar al sadiq you know the truthful the sixth imam is uh, the, the, that that's part of the, the so to differentiate him from from jafar the liar Abdul Baha in one of his writings says that Jafar was really the truthful, you know, you know, so it was never a liar. He he actually um, and 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 if you read, uh, I highly recommend you read uh, one of the chapters uh, in Dr. Mujan Momen's An Introduction to Shia Islam, where he wonderfully explains the controversy and what happened so there were these these deputies that were known as safir or bobs or gates here the bob refers to them um and uh, and and during the the period where they were the intermediaries between the hidden imam and the public it's called the lesser occultation or um sogra and then there is the greater occultation after the the termination of these gates there there is the the greater occultation until the uh, the the um uh, the appearance of the poem of the house of muhammad but the date that is 1260 the year 260 was the year of the death of hassan al askari so the 11th Imam died in 260 AH, and the thousand years after that, the year 1260 in the Anohedria, is the year of the declaration of the Bab. So the lesser occultation was really not, you know, has been sort of, and you know, Baha'u'llah talks about it, that he says it's, it's just a bunch of rubbish. You know, in Jawahar al Asrar, you know, and the cities that, you know, they, they claimed that uh, the Qa'im lived in Jabul Gha and Jabul Sa and just a bunch of rubbish, you know. So, um, but here you will see the graciousness and also the fact that the Bab wanted to maintain that tradition that, that the, the main uh, Athna Asharia, the Twelver Shiism, believed in at the time. Uh, here, I believe it's a, it's a grace that uh, the Bob, um, you know, includes these four as well. And but I find it very interesting in the translation. He says that on that the first gate hath returned to the world together with those who believed in him, whether truly or not. <laughs> I, I found that phrase to be, and the Bob uses that whether truly or not. So. There was a controversy, but he says, you know, uh, part of the letters of the living. They, so he has included these four gates or Novav or uh, Avab, the, the gates or the Safirs uh, that are believed in, in mainstream Shia Islam. Um, and then um, the, the chapter 17th, 18th and 19th as well, um, the, the, the second deputy, the the um the third deputy and the fourth deputy as well okay and um i think this is going to be the end for us so that ends the the first vahid of the persian bayan uh eight more books to go 
friends now if we have any questions i know we have gone way past our time but i will tell you this is going to be a very tough um timeline to try to do this 600 page very rich very um you know content rich uh book uh to be presented you know and that so i will do my very best but at times i'm going to fail to to really provide you with uh with all the facets of it. So anyhow, I, I, Dr. Stockman, if you can now come in and help us. I'm back and I'm looking to see if we have any questions, but I have a few things to ask about anyway until then. Um, if I can manage to get this to, there we go. Oh yeah, we have some questions. Um, you might wanna first of all, make the comment of, well, I need to start by saying this was a magnificent summary, Cheryl, I took four pages or maybe it was five pages of notes, uh, and they just seemed to go on and on forever. Uh, it really quite remarkably thorough presentation about the, the Bob, the, the Bayan itself, its history, its composition, its translations, its uh, editions. And now having uh, a chance to understand really what was in the entire first book of the Bayan is really very helpful from the opening um, paragraphs that uh, set the, the tone to the other, the other um, uh, paragraphs that all tell us about the various uh, imams and gates that, that, that's fascinating and it makes it very easy to remember the contents of the first of our head as well. Um, you might want to start by saying something about the fact that these slides are not going to be available um, because I'm sure people will be asking about that. Yes, I, I, I've decided um, again, for, for, for reasons that, um, you know, perhaps some of you might suspect, um, is that I rather um, keep the slides to myself. You obviously will have the, uh, this presentation that will be posted by the Wilmet Institute on their YouTube channel. And uh, for those of you who, who would like to go back and reread some of the slides and take notes from it by all means. So the, the slides will be there in a video form, but not in an electronic form uh, so that, that it could be copied and pasted and all that. And that's just to, uh, you know, for, for, for certain reasons, you know, I'm sure some of you will recognize. Uh, I, I don't want this to be necessarily in the cyberspace. You know, for the time being, you know, we're dealing with a a text that is not um, an authorized text. Uh, you know, in the Baha'i context, this Wilmette Institute is a Baha'i uh, institution. Uh, so again, these are going to be very provisional. The the sections that obviously we have access to are are provided in the selections from the writings of the Bob and those sections that are published in the Gates of the Heart as well. So. Um, uh, I, please forgive me if, uh, if, if that disappoints you, but at this time, that's where we're going to do, uh, that's what we're going to do. So, and I, I believe, uh, our, our, our principal here has, has concurred with that as well. So. Sure. I, I think that's fine. Uh, uh, Irina wants to thank you for giving us the Persian text and reading aloud because she found that very uh, helpful. And I think it's very nice to hear the intonation and rhythm of the original, which obviously is quite different from the translation into English. The translation cannot capture the that kind of a style as well. And so it, that really does help. Paul Mantle, um, who I think is in every, listens to every web talk, which is marvelous, um, says that Ahang Rabani compiled a list of 30 laws in the Bayan uh, citing their chapter and verse where they're found in the Bayan that are reflected in the Kitabi uh, Do you know anything about that? I, I, I don't, I haven't seen that. Uh, uh, our, our late friend, I mean, Ahan Rabban, he was a, such a wonderful scholar and I, we, we miss him dearly. Um, there, there are, you know, works that have been done by scholars like Dr. Rabbani. Um, I, again, I don't, I, I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. Um, I think right now um, the, the most um, the most authoritative, if you will, analysis 
um, of the writings of the Bob in general is the gate of the heart, you know, and I think we should, uh, uh, for, for the, at least the purpose of, uh, of this course, we should really focus our attention on that book because I, I think it's, it's a mar marvelous uh, uh, and all encompassing, you know, with, uh, um, you know, with all the works of the Bob. I mean, uh, Dear Nader has, has included about close to a uh, hundred or even a little bit more than hundred pages just on the Bayon. So uh, there is, uh, but he approaches it uh, wonderfully from a thematic point of view and, 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 and where the areas that really are the pivotal and the core uh, of the Bayon. And you will see that the core of the Bayon, as the Guardian put it, really is about him whom God shall make man manifest. It's about the continuation. It's about progressive revelation. You know, this is many of you. I mean, obviously, we we have the the, the magnificent Iran, uh, but you know, Iran was not the first that that proclaimed progressive revelation. The Bayan is, you know. So it's uh, and and Bahá'u'lláh takes that, recaptures it, and obviously presented in a in a brilliant and magnificent way, you know, as a continuation. So you could see that and you can see the language as well that is somewhat very similar because the Iran is also in Persian uh, mm -hmm. with Arabic passages. So the Bayan and Iran really dovetail beautifully together. Uh, and in future, scholars would study that and, and do a comparative study of it, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, so, so, you know, this is just the start. We're just scratching the surface. Good. Shirley says, please explain how Kulishay 361 refers to Baha'u'llah. Uh, first of all, uh, you should read again Dr. Saidi's uh, explanation, but Kulishay means uh, all things, uh, you know, and it is. I mean, everything refers to the Bob refers to the, the greatest name of God. Uh, which is Qayyum, which is Baha, you know, and this this four letter word that you remember there was a, there was a mention of it when I read that passage. That four letter is Baha, okay, Be He Aleph Hamze. That's Baha. So again, it's somewhat cryptic, but there are references. Uh, you will see that the, 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 there is. As more and more uh, the revelation of the the Bab reach its zenith, the 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 word Baha, the word uh, you know, and and him whom God shall make manifest, they become so ubiquitous uh, in his writings, and uh, and and you you'll see that also in uh, Dr. Saidi's analysis as well. Mm -hmm. Paul uh, also asked. Paul Mantle also asked. Is explained to me. But the way in which Baha'u'llah in the Agon gave a summarizing quote at the beginning of both part one and part two in the Agon in Arabic and then elaborates at length in Persian mirrors the way the Bab wrote. Perhaps, yes, yes. The style is definitely very similar. Definitely. Uh, you know, you could, you could, they, they, they could be either or when I read the, you know, I, I've had the privilege of studying the Iran in the past. And now that I'm restudying and, and going more in depth in the Bayan, I, I, the, the, the similarities are so, you know, so uncanny. I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, it, you, you can see uh, the way the Bob uh, expresses you know himself, and in the way Baha'u'llah, particularly during the Ayyam Butun, the period of concealment in the Baghdad period in Persian, you could see that. You could see that those those the parallels between them. And uh, but the language of the 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 Persian Bayan is 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 very unique in that it's also simple. It is it is sophisticated very cogent but very intelligent uh and very intelligible and very coherent that you know you know in comparison to some of his <laughs> earlier writings that are very esoteric they're in arabic they're you got to read between the lines and it's just you know there are a lot more here you know <laughs> the veil is uplifted now that he refers to himself as the qa'am 
he is very clear, you know, in, you know, in, in his expressions. Mm -hmm. Perjaya says, will the eight more books to go be in the form of webinars such as this one and great class, by the way, thank you. <laughs> well, we will try, yes. Uh, the, next, the next session would, uh, or next webinar will be actually on book two. Book two is the lengthiest of all the books of the Bayon. Um, so I, I couldn't double it up with anything else. As you can see, we're right, we ran out of time or went over time. So the next one, it's going to be uh, book two. Then we're the third, fourth, and fifth. We're going to probably double up, uh, you know, book three and book four, and then book five and book six and book seven and eight and nine, you know, something to that effect. So we'll... Uh, uh, I'll see. I mean, this is this is uncharted territory. I haven't done this, so uh, please bear with me. Eric uh, asks this question: Do you care to comment on the idea that Peter Terry took from Vahid Nine Bob Ten that quote, "The whole point of the Bayan and the religion of the Bab is that the believer therein purif purify his heart so that it will be capable of recognizing Him whom God shall make manifest and thereby obey God." Okay, some of this theme is going to be is very prevalent in the uh, uh, in, in 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 the entire text of the Bayan, and there are sections that are actually translated by the Baha'i World Center. So uh, I I don't care to comment on any of the future uh, books or Vahids, uh because we're going to be covering them. So maybe you can uh, reinstate okay. your question uh, when we get to that uh, book or that chapter specifically. Presumably the last webinar, since that's at the very end, right? Book nine, chapter 10. Mm -hmm. uh, Runa asks this question. She says she thought that Mullah Ali Bastami was the, it was the fourth letter of the living and not the second letter of the living. No, this is a, a common, unfortunately, because of the listing in the Dawnbreakers, uh, they're not chronological uh, of the, the list of the letters of the living. Um, again, when Nabi listed them, he, he, he grouped the, the Boshue brothers and cousins and, you know, family members uh, together. Uh, but uh, it is without a shadow of a doubt that, and you know, obviously the Bob himself has declared it to be, but... Uh, the second letter of the living was Mullah Ali Abastami, one of the um, uh, students, one of the prominent students of uh, Sayyid Qasim Arashti. You have to understand that with the exception of Tahere, who never attained the presence of the Bab, uh, all the other letters of the living, uh, including Qudus, including obviously Mullah Hussein and Mullah Ali, all of them were uh, students of Sayyid Qasim Rashti. And uh, the Bob actually does refer to, with, uh, with great glow, in glowing terms, to uh, Sayyid Qasim Rashti. Um, and, and he refers to him as the deceased Sayyid mm -hmm. um, and the followers of the deceased Sayyid, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he actually elevates the rank of those as, as the most learned amongst the. Uh, uh, the clergies in the land. So uh, majority of the letters of the living and majority of them were also uh, unfortunately met their death and their martyrdom at the fort of Sheikh Tabarsi. I would say probably two thirds of them were killed at the fort, for, uh, Sheikh of Fort Tabarsi and the remaining uh, group like Tahere, like Sayyid Hussein Yazdi were, were martyred during the Babi pogrom of uh, 1852. Okay, was uh, was uh, um, imprisoned in the Siah Chal during that period. Right. We're going to have uh, Siah Mac Sabihi Mogadam, I think is his name, talk about uh, Sheikh Tabarsi in a web talk in June, I believe it is. That's wonderful. That would be quite nice. He's yes. written quite a lot about it. James says, just a comment, very thorough. Every time I formulated a question, you answered it within two slides. Thank you very much for your presentation. Sharon says, thank you very much. What is the schedule of future courses on this subject? Are they free? Um, perhaps I should say that the web talks, the remaining web talks will be available to everyone's probably starting in September. 
The remaining four web talks will only be available to people who've signed up for the course on the Persian Bayan. They're really the contents of the course. Um, but you can join that course for only $10 if you've never taken a Wellman Institute course before. On the other hand, we're already almost full. So the cap is maybe only six students left can get in before we hit the cap. And I don't think I better raise it anymore because the course will get too noisy. It'll be hard for anybody to uh, participate with this. Just too many, too many questions flying around. Um, but the remaining web talks will be made available probably six months after the course ends in September or October, and we will announce it. They'll suddenly be available on our YouTube channel, and if you subscribe to that, you'll, I think, get a notice if they suddenly have appeared. Uh, Grant says, you stated that, an, uh, an, uh, you stated that an, a canonical version of the author does not exist, which in part prevents an authoritative translation. How will this ultimately be resolved? Will one be uncovered? Well, this is a good question, I, I, you know, and could be a subject of a lengthy uh, presentation. However, uh, first, you know, the house, the way they approach manuscripts, they, they first authenticate it, okay? So any tablets, anything has to be authenticated and it has to be sealed and approved uh, by the Baha'i World Center um, Archive Committee that, that it is a sacred text from the Bab, Baha'u'llah, Abdul Bahar or Shobi Effendi. Um, and then, then, then there is a decision. Now, this is a more of a scholarly uh, you know, um, task to, to look at, to create a critical edition. You know? I mean, you would have to look at some of the early editions, what's available. Uh, you know, we know that we have a copy at the World Center um, of Sayyid Hussein Yazdi's edition. Uh, there has been references uh, by both Dr. Muhammad Hosseini orally to me and also in Dennis McEwen's uh, book about that certain small sections of it has been uh, damaged, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, so again, one has to figure out, okay, then which edition do you go to? What's the next best edition? Mm -hmm. um, so, so that doing that critical studies, and there may all still be other editions of the Bayon, very author, very you know uh, prominent versions, early versions, still available in the hands right. of people around the world. Who knows right. that they, they don't remember, you know? So, so once that is, so you see, that's the task. You got to bring all the editions, and then you got to compare them. You know, 6,220 <laughs> lines, you know, uh, you have to compare them one line by line, you know, try to go through it. This is formidable. This is, aw you know, it's an awesome task to do. And yep. then get into, once you have a, then a so-called so canonical, uh, authoritative, uh, approved version, then the house will decide whether it's going to be translated, what parts of it will be added. I, I presume that will be done in sections, mm -hmm. uh, you know, eventually. But again, it's the lengthiest revelation we have in a, in a single volume from between the two manifestations of God, you know, in this age. It's the lengthiest holy book of all time. There's no question about that. Uh, so the, the Bayan is a, you know, it's formidable, you know, in many ways. So, but, but it will be a rewarding thing, obviously in future as more scholars dedicate their time and energy, it can be done. I mean, it certainly will be done, but I don't know whether it's going to be done in the next couple of years or so, but <laughs> certainly will be done in, in, in future. And we may be finding manuscripts two, 200 years from now that make us wonder whether we should change this word into that word. Yes, that's oh, because that can happen. There is absolutely it, even even now. What was a um, summons of the Lord of Hosts? They had exactly that issue. What texts to include in the survey? Hey, Cal, because there were two different versions. They had to decide which version. But Baha'u'llah had approved both versions. Which version to use? Mm -hmm. um, Bill Collins uh, says, "Do you think the Bob chose the 18 figures being returned in the Letters of the Living from the Shia mystical identification of what Henry Corbin?" called the Shia Pleroma, the central sacred figures embodied by Muhammad, Fatima, the 12 Imams, and the four gates of the hidden Imam. 
there's a whole mystical discourse about the Nur al-Muhammadi, the Muhammadan light that emanated from them? Well, um, that's a very good question. Um, the, uh, Henri Corbin, just what I know about him as a scholar, he um, was, he did translate some of the works of Sheikh Ahmad, but he completely disregarded uh, Sayyid Qasim al-Rashdi and went to Aga Muhammad Khan, Haji Mirza Karim Khan Kermani, the uh -huh. other, you know, the sort of successor. the false successor of yeah. the uh, of of the Sheikhi school and uh, and so on. Um, so this this whole notion of uh, these sacred figures were were very prevalent, and the fact that the Bob is using it is 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 there to substantiate again for those who require who are going to ask the question there you know uh okay well here's the hidden imam uh, there were supposed to be these the 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 resurrection of these uh, 18 souls or these you know so so the bob is doing that uh you know some of the other stuff like about where baha'u'llah refers to it in in the jawahar al-asra uh, and in the iran about some of these really false uh, traditions, obviously, they're they're ignored by the manifestation of God. Uh, you know, so yes, I think there is correlation. I think what Henri Corbin uh, does is it's somewhat similar, but you have to understand. I found that you know, and having spoken with scholars who studied him, um, people like um, Dr. Um, Ross Woodman. Uh, mm -hmm. the late professor emeritus of literature. He did a lot of works and also Dr. Juan Cole who had written on Sheikhis and other, other Sheikhi scholars. But it seems that, you know, Corban's work fails in the fact that he doesn't include Sayyid Qasim al-Rashti because Sayyid Qasim al-Rashti was really teaching, uh, he was the most brilliant of the, uh, of the students of, uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmad and became his successor without a shadow of a doubt, despite the fact that Karim Khan protested. But uh, and when he passed away, Karim Khan came back and basically, you know, got the other followers who did not convert to the faith of the Bab uh, to 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 him, you know, as the as the center of the Sheikhi school. Um, so I think Corban's work suffers. For uh, being that it's incomplete, it doesn't encompass all the sheikhi, you know, mm -hmm. aspects and facets of it. So mm -hmm. I find some of the works that he has done with say uh, with Sheikh Ahmad is good, but some of the other stuff that he translates and uh, puts credence on Muhammad Karim Khan, uh, you know, it's it's Absolutely. Just, it's yeah. Yeah, Eric says that you mentioned the publication of the the uh, Akdas in 1992, and were you just referring to the authorized translation into English, or were you also referring to the first authorized edition of the Akdas in Arabic? When was when did that appear? Well, you know, the authorized edition of the Akdas actually happened at that time as well. A lot of the Western Baha'is may not know that there was a there was never an authorized edition um, it, during the time of the guardianship. There was a lithographed copy that, and I, well, I, I, should, I, should, I should correct myself. There were, during the time of Baha'u'llah, there were some publications, I think, in uh, the, by the Nasseri Press in mm -hmm. Egypt of the, of the Ardas, and then, uh, but they became out of print uh, after many years. So even in Iran, there weren't too many copies of the, I, I know as a, um, as a young boy when I was in Iran, um, there weren't, you know, there weren't copies of the Ardas very, very readily available. And even mm -hmm. after, you know, in my, in my teens prior to 1990, Two, um, there were various editions. Well, there were not. There was just one in the handwriting of Zainal Mugharabin that was being kind of passed around in copies. So the the actual authorized edition, the Guardian had said that had to be by the House of Justice, you know, and it would it would be pending. So 
that came into existence uh, with the translation in 1992. So the Persian Baha'is and the Arab Baha'is, Arab-speaking Baha'is of the world also were, were gifted uh, and were privileged with the edition. And the house did a magnificent copy that is in the handwriting of uh, um, Borhan Zahrai, which is a beautifully calligraphied in, in the Nasq style of uh, Arabic. Uh, beautifully presented, uh, gold bound. I mean, it's just magnificent. If you see that copy, you should get a copy of it yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you have it, you should cherish it. So, mm -hmm. so that's the first authorized edition of the uh, of the Kitab Akdas, plus the authorized translation of it. Both right. of them were concurrently preferred to the Baha'i world. Right, as I understand it, the Arabic version had all of the various parts that the English version had the synopsis and codification and the questions and answers and the, all the other things that the English Aptos has, if they had been available in Arabic, perhaps scattered about, now at least they were all published in the same place. Yes. yes. Yeah. So that's an important um, aspect of that publication. Mary says in God Passes by Shoghi Effendi states that the Egan is the prophesied completion of the Persian Bayan. Doesn't that explain the similarities in the style? In the Persian text in the slide, the maku, maku was spelled without the ha. Would, would that affect its numerical value? Is it maku or maku? You know, it's both. The Bob I refers to it. Um, I mean, I, in this version that I have, it's 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 the the he is 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 missing. It's it's maku. So, and both of them are correct. Uh, I mean, I, I tend to want to say mahku because mah means moon, and yeah. ku is like a moon shaped mountain. You know, I think that's what originally what it was. But there is references to both being correct. Uh, so, um, again, I, I, I would say just go with the one uh, that I think, what is it the selections from the writings say? I, I think. Uh, I have to double check that. Remember. Yeah. yeah. Whether it's a mountain. It's not our mountain. Yes. Yeah. So we'll we'll take a look at that. Just just double check that of what what the Baha'i World Center uh, uses as being um, the uh, the reference to that. But it's yeah. it's the reference of the same. Yeah. And actually, that looks like that was Runa's question because I can't always see the lines separating these things. Mary's question was actually just this whole question about the prophesied completion of the Persian Bayan in the, uh, the Egon, and doesn't that explain the similarities in the style? Yes, I had answered that earlier, I believe, um, that there is very similar style. Yeah. Um, Stewart says, very much enjoyed this first presentation. Looking forward to the next session. Thank you. Uh, Bill Collins says the same thing. Thank you for your great response. Nima. Rafi E has weighed in as well. Excellent presentation, stimulating topic on the Persian Bayan. I would like to ask if the copy of the Bayan in the hand of Sayyid Hussein at Yazdi at the World Center Archives is the self same copy which was included in the series of manuscripts prepared by the National Committee for the Preservation of the Sacred Writings in Iran prior to the revolution. No. Is this the same copy or is it another draft copy penned by Sayyid Hussein at Yazdi? No, there is. The the INBA, the International, uh, the Iranian National Baha'i Archives, uh, which again uh, some of the scholars know about this, is that was it was a collection that was prepared for preservation um, of the sacred text that was available in Iran at the time. It was right. not. It did not include any of the manuscripts that were at the Baha'i World Center. The 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 ones that are at the Baha'i World Center. They are the Baha'i World Center possession. They have never and they have never been published. Uh, we don't know. I mean, this is we don't know what's there. So you know, the only clue that I got from what was there was what Dennis McEwen had basically itemized based mm -hmm. on his uh, research at the World Center uh, and having access to the archives. So right. edition, I think that are in the INBA. Uh, that are those are different. They are not the uh, the copy of the Sayyid Hussein Yazdi. You know the the, the Sayyid Hussein Yazdi copy is so precious 
mm-hmm. that I don't think, I mean, at this stage, um, I mean, those who are privileged to see it, like Dr. Mohammed Hosseini uh, back in 50 years ago, maybe the house at that time, and based on the resources, maybe that was possible. Now, with uh, with all the sophisticated preservations and various things, um, you know, you know, perhaps what they may do, the house may do at some point, um, provide a facsimile of one of the pages, one or two pages, the, the way they did with the Iran, um, you know, with the first page of the Iran and the last page of the Iran in the handwriting of Abdul Baha, which is magnificent. Um, that that's it, you know, and the rest. It's, it's in future, all of these will be available, I am sure, uh, in, in, uh, in a way where scholars can look at these uh, facsimile copies of these uh, sacred texts. But at, at this stage, um, it's a very precious archival material, Nima. I don't believe that this is uh, something that uh, will be made available anytime soon, you know? Sure, sure. Mary asks another question. Actually, we have three questions that are follow-ups, uh, which have just popped in. Uh, Mary says, yes, he said that they had similar styles, but he never mentioned that the Egon was the completion of the Bayan. Maybe that's, maybe it is only I who thinks that's significant. Well, this is a reference by The Guardian, where uh, Shoghi Effendi, as the authorized interpreter uh, of and elucidator of the uh, of the writings uh, he has stated that uh, you know the the uh, the Iran uh, seems to be the completion I mean neither Baha'u'llah has made that claim uh, nor any of the I don't believe Abdul Baha may have uh, I, I have no idea I haven't read any um, uh, letters from Abdul Baha but that doesn't mean that does not exist it may exist where he had made references to it, uh, to the Bayan as being, you know, the whole subject of the Persian Bayan was kind of shelved because mm-hmm. of the fact uh, they, you have to understand at the early stages of the faith, many of the writings, central writings of the faith were not available, were not printed at the time. Right. Many of the rest, you know, and this is why Shoghi Effendi, started you know he did it started with gleanings and then epistle to the son of the wolf you know prayers and meditations to to bring in more authorized authoritative translations so the bayon was really not a priority and as such now 100 years later or so uh, i mean obviously you know we were starting to look at it you know mm-hmm. and look at the bayon you know but yeah, a different situation now, very, very much so. Uh, Runa says, thank you so much, greatly enjoyed it. Hopefully there will be room for me to sign up for the course. And yes, there is still room for you. In a moment, I will mention the link. And the only other thing that occurs to me is that you mentioned Dennis McEwen's uh, use of the archives, but he was never staff in Haifa. He was just simply allowed to attend, uh, to utilize the archives for a period of time. So that's something that occurred to me and to someone else. So I thought I would mention that as well. I didn't know how what that situation was. And it seemed that the house were very gracious uh, to were. him. And you know, he, he they were. His, his, his book is does have value, uh, you know, and Dr. Afnan once said to me that it is valuable in the sense that uh, there is a, um, the listing, the uh, the information that is provided. However, his interpretation of the writings of the Bob uh, are not exactly accurate, to say yeah. the least. Yeah, well, we are all progressing in that, and we all have a lot to thank you today for giving us a, a great set of insight into not only the Bayan in general and its origin and uh, translations, but also into the entire of the first book 